History in the making. No one expected that outcome. The sixth place team takes down the greatest dynasty. You tried to tell us it was all gonna end. LCS is just a lot more dynamic now. It's not the same as any other year. There is no favorite anymore. We hear the noise and start to plan our revenge. We're gonna disband or implode. We're gonna get complacent. We're gonna end seventh, all those things. That was the expectation for us. We're hard to stop. I mean, we smashed the whole league. Dardock puts himself in front, and the quick orange box jumps over the Nexus. Chunks him out, but here comes the engage. Double kills moving. Oh, he's got it! He's got it! He's got it! And the fight continues well for Liquid. I was like being the underdogs. If everybody's doubting you and then you just win, it feels so much better. The death sentence! Hakuo is a freaking monster this day! 100 teams sneaking all the way up and stealing the playoff by. I said before the split began that we're gonna win. And I'll do everything in my power to make it happen. Made to be legends. Welcome back to the NALCS Countdown. We're narrowing in on Echo Fox versus Team Liquid, our first semifinal of this weekend. And when looking at the departure of TSM from the playoff race, so go the feelings that they would inevitably win it all. And so, using your analytical prowess, both you guys here and you at home, I want you guys to give me the percentage chance that each of these remaining teams will lift the championship trophy in Miami. And while we grab Jat and Mark's probability, spam chat with who you think is going to win and take it all using the team's try codes as you see on the bottom of the screen. So spam away. We'll check in with those numbers soon enough. For now, though, I'm going to turn to you guys and look for your prediction percentages. Yeah, as we heard from Doublelift in that piece just now, there's no clear favorites coming into this. Uh, and that's why the percentages are so interesting. So I actually did, like, real probabilities math. Yeah, we mathed the yeah. hell out of this. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a Bayesian it, graph is, I think, what it is. Yeah, Bayesian. Mark helped me with the formulas. Nice, uh, I this, like we it. We spent a lot of time on this before the show, actually. So what this essentially does is you pick your probabilities for each of the matchups, and that gives you a probability of getting any of these matchups. Right. Then you pick the probabilities again for the to spit out those. your final percentages. Exactly. And basically, because I think 100 Thieves' matchup against Clutch is a 70-30 game, and then even though they're close to 50-50, if they play either Echo Fox or Taylor in the finals, their overall this is their percentage is much chance higher. to win the split. So I kind of just gave away my predictions for the rest of the weekend. There you but I do it. like the percentages that spit out. Team Liquid has a real chance. A lot of teams uh, are in the running. Well, exactly. So a lead for 100 Thieves there, but mostly because of their semifinal matchup and how that helps their numbers moving forward. A much closer matchup here today with Team Liquid having a slight edge. Let's talk Mark's numbers. Yeah, so, I mean, Jack did all this crazy math. I just went with my gut. I, I got <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let's just talk about what I think. And, yeah. uh, I spent, what do you think? Yeah, I spent the rest of the time helping Jat with his. <laughs> so, that one spent a lot more work. Okay. Um, but, but you, similarly, you have the same hierarchy, slightly different numbers. Right, absolutely. And I think one of the things that he's hitting on very importantly there is the fact that we are expecting 100 Thieves to make the finals more so mm -hmm. than anyone else here. Okay. Um, and the thing that we're going to have to do, though, is reevaluate after we see these semifinals because a lot of these finals prediction matchups are based off mm -hmm. what we know right now. But maybe right. Echo Fox comes in and smashes TL and Huni looks like a god. And then at that point, yeah. you're like, well, okay, maybe they're the new favorite. So this is to reevaluate. But right now, looking at it, no one has any idea exactly who's going to do what. Right. I think the, what yeah. we're landing on here is that there is not a clear favorite. Right. Well, so many of these teams have had great points in the season and weak points in the season. So you don't really know which team is going to show up. We thought TSM was through their struggles, and now they're out of it. All right, oh, here are boy. the viewer numbers as That's they really come close in. To I mean, they, they very to close the to the mirror. Like Although it does, it does appear as though viewer numbers suggest Team Liquid Fox is not as close as it's some close. others might think. I yeah, think. I'm, not sure. I'm sure the fans have like an overall prevailing sentiment, but, mm -hmm. you know, it is pretty close here. And uh... I'm impressed with the, the 100 support. 
in right? chat right now. Especially well, they, it's a completely new org to kind of, a lot of times this is just like popularity. I'm, I'm sure Nate Shot saw that poll and like tweeted out like, everyone go spam chat. <laughs> right. And the guy has two million <laughs> followers in there. Yeah, does the, do I get merch? Yeah. Uh, no, anyway, with those numbers locked in, I do want to talk through each of these four teams remaining in playoffs and kind of talk about strengths, weaknesses, and how they might fulfill that destiny, right, mm -hmm. of holding the trophy over their heads. Let's start with 100 Thieves, the team projected by percentage points. To Apparently win it all. they are the favorites now. Yes. And it has to do with the number one seed, the way they look at the end of the regular season, and the fact that the team has a lot of individual experience, even if they're a new team. Aframu, former NALCS champion. Medios, former NALCS champion. Cody Sun was in the finals last split. All of these guys uh, have, you know, been to Worlds. They've played a lot of big splits. And look how long and just they've been the number of years that, accrued on the professional level. That's the thing. It's not just the success that they've had, but how long they've been doing it here. And once again, for this group of five guys to get first again, it, it's just a testament to how long that they've been playing and how how much time they've maintained that consistency of being great. Right, Medios redefining his own consistency. Aframo still, or rather, returning to top form. Let's move right along to their opponents tomorrow in Clutch Gaming. Yeah, and Clutch Gaming is the team that's surprising to be here for a lot of people, and they actually have some real strengths. They play really good defense, and unlike a lot of other teams who talk about needing to play a bunch of different ways to prove their versatility, Clutch focuses on their strengths in almost every single game, which is why I think they've been able to generate these victories, and they game plan really well for their opponents. Right, and the other thing that they have right now is kind of the attitude. They just feel like they have this intangible that no one else has where they are the underdogs, almost across the board, even though it's much closer than before. Uh, they only have one win against the remaining players. That's team. your worry right mm -hmm. there, right, is this idea of Clutch being a super consistent team, but they consistently pre perform to a level that isn't expected to win. Right, but because that's the prevailing sentiment, it kind of helps them because when they make mistakes and things like that they don't get as down as some teams like maybe a TSM where it's like we're supposed to crush them and like what happened this game and then these guys don't have that kind of mentality that they're working with yeah and they've used the energy of nobody believes in us to kind of unlock their attitudes in a lot of ways yeah. when things do go wrong it doesn't matter because they're still just going to try and prove them wrong on the next step right, perfect example is their series against TSM getting smashed in game one then yeah. we've got the whole fiasco around the bot lane turret dive and the failed summoner spells and yet they come back win that one in the next two yeah. back to back Back to finish a 3-1 victory over the favorites coming into the playoffs. On to the games today, though. Echo Fox versus Team Liquid. Let's start with Team Liquid. Both these guys feel pretty dependent on the meta, and especially for Team Liquid, it feels like it's playing perfectly into their strengths right now. A lot of bot lane focus, a lot of AD carries being the most important things. More stable matchups in the top lane with Impact mostly being able to play tanks uh, means that a lot of the action should be played through bot lane right now. Yeah, and Doublelift didn't die in the series against Cloud9. Ayo. Impact was receiving three top lane bans in every single one of those games, still looked effective. The only hiccup really in that series, I think, was Ole's play, looking a little spotty in the mid game. Mm -hmm. And those can cost you against a team as aggressive as Echo Fox, who gets one pick and then rushes to Baron. So he does have to clean that play up. Team Liquid, though, as Mark says, is in meta right now. All right, now as we posit the probabilities of each of these teams, a narrow feels Echo Fox has recovered captured their early split, split rather strengths. Yeah, now that TSM are gone, I'm pretty sure it's just us and TL. I think today is actually like the actual finals pretty much, and whoever wins that will win against 100 Thieves and Clutch. Uh, I think the break was really good. When we came back and all started practicing together again for that two weeks, uh, started off a little bumpy at first, but after like one or two days, everyone was used to each other again, and we started really killing it in scrims. So we, we spent a lot of time talking about like our own mistakes for the past two weeks and what we did in mid-game and how we can slow ourselves down. So I'm just going to remind them about that and make sure we're clean. What is what's most interesting to me there is what he's talking about how he feels like this is the finals matchup, which means that in scrims, because people usually play opposite side of the bracket, mm -hmm. they're probably destroying 100 Thieves right. and Clutch Gaming in scrims, which makes them feel like this is their last you know, real test, because if they beat TL here today, they are well, already hard to smash these other guys. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, I mean, that looks real good for Echo Fox, but they still have to worry about the meta a little bit. And I think that has been their biggest weakness recently. Uh, also in the way teams play against them. So, Huni was taking over a lot of games and demanding a lot of priority early, but now if he's on a tank, his collapses down to the rest of the team and his split push threat is diminished, and it's meaning the other people on the team need to step up and also need to absorb a lot more focus, which wasn't happening earlier on in the year. Right, we've seen that bot lane of Echo Fox get abused at times, and we just talked about how that could yeah. be a major strength for Team Liquid, so we're going to have to see how that shakes out and what that month long of practice has done for Echo Fox. Especially because it's, it's you know, the biggest weakness that we've seen from them, and it doesn't feel like it should just necessarily get any better. We saw the substitutes come in, they're back to the starting lineup, but the last time we saw them, they were 
were getting smashed, and now they didn't play at all in the first round. So a little concerning. They still have Huni and Dardock, the best jungle That's top duo. Thing, but right, you will always yep. return yep. to the idea that they've got Huni and Dardock controlling the top side of the map. And that's where I want to put some very specific focus here in our featured matchup of this semifinal series. Huni versus Impact. These guys have an incredible history together, actually. Yeah, when you really think about it, two former top laners of SKT Impact a world champion in 2013, Huni a world finalist last, last year. And if you ask most people right now who was the better top laner, they're going to tell you Huni yep. because he was almost unanimously first team all NALCS. But when you look at the history of who has won, Impact has a world championship. Impact knocked Huni out of the playoffs in 2016. Impact kept Huni out of Worlds in 2016. And With has the had the upper hand exactly. in all those matchups. So Huni's got a lot to prove to try and overcome Impact finally. Right. Of course, they're doing this with different rosters behind them. And so a lot of that, you know, the history, we'll see if they can shake that off and refocus in on today's series. When we talk about today's series, one thing we did last week, we had a little bit of fun with it, was the over-unders for these best of five. So I've got three for you today. I'm going to throw stats at you. You tell me over over or under for those best of fives. First up, double lifts deaths in this series. We're putting the number at three and a half. Will he have more or less today? That's uh, a low number, man. He uh, died zero times against Cloud9. Yeah. I'm going to go under. Uh, for me, it's basically, and I don't want to give away my prediction, but it comes down to what I think will happen today, and I expect him to maybe have one bad game. Yeah. But if they play well, he should stay alive. One bad game, and he dies four times. So, Double it. didn't die yeah. last series. He only died 20 times during the regular season. His average deaths per game, including playoffs, is actually under one. Exactly. But I still say over, just because I think there will be a game where Huni's popping off and one-shotting him at least four times. All right, fair enough. we got a little difference here in the first stat of the day. Next up, average game time. 35 and a half minutes. That is the exact average game time of our playoff games up to this point for reference. And I'm going to say under because right. for me, these guys both play very explosive play styles. We did see a little bit more slow gameplay and methodical play style last series for TL, but I still don't believe that that's how it's going to work against Echo Fox, who are kind of, like they said, if they fall behind, they're just going to keep making plays. Okay. I, I think this number's right on the money, and I do think Echo Fox slowed down their play style a little bit on this patch, so I'm going to go over, but it's it's close. This I like it. All right. Yeah, point. we're going to yeah. be counting the seconds there on that one. Our final over under is uh, Team Liquid versus Fox. Average of kills for the series, or rather, sorry, total, total, kills. Yeah. total kills for the series. I'm going to give you the average so you have a number. To, but 80.5 over under for total kills. Both of these teams in the games they've played against each other have averaged 18 and a half kills total in their games. Once again, I'm picking the under. For me, this is basically yeah. 20 kills a game. Are you going f more than four more games? More than four, exactly. And for me, I, I don't really think so, so I'm going to take the under once again. Yeah, I'm going over on this one. I think it's going to be a long series, and these are two very aggressive teams. All right, there you have it. A lot of this determined by the length of the series itself. With about a minute and a half before champions select, like, let me get your wing conditions for this series. Real quick, Echo Fox. Yeah, so I think their win condition is to actually play around Huni because that's how they won early and later in the season when teams were ignoring them. The rest of the team was trying to make plays without Huni while Huni was super strong. Play around Huni, get that strength. All right, play around Huni. What's the answer for Team Liquid? Funnily enough, uh, my win condition is ignore Huni as much as possible, <laughs> much for the same reason. If you opt into 2v2 and Huni, that's playing to their strengths. They want to dominate those. They have the best jungle top in the map. Don't do that. Let impact absorb as much as possible. Play around double lift. Well, a lot of your reasons has already been thrown out. So real quick, verbally, who are you predicting to win today's series and be the first team to move on to the finals in Fillmore? Super hard to predict, so I'm actually going TL 3-2. 3-2. Okay, so a tight series here, but yeah. going to Team Liquid, Mark, what are you thinking? 3-2 as well. Only thing I'll say is that with the strengths being so different, I wouldn't be surprised if the series is actually a shorter game, but it's very close to tell what's going to happen, so 3-2 is the best we can do. But Team Liquid as well. Team Liquid, Team Liquid, well. Team Liquid tight series. We'll see how it all unfolds. Let's toss it out to the Battle Arena to get us into Game 1. Thank you, Dash. And this is going to be a semi-final to remember. My name is Pastry Time. Joining me is Kobe and Azale, lads. It's going to be a good one. It definitely is, man. And if there's one thing we learned from the win conditions, it's all about Huni. <laughs> Whether you're ignoring him or Kevin for him. <laughs> How can it be all about ignoring someone? Here we go, though. Zaya is banned out by Echo Fox themselves here. We, there's been so much discussion about during the regular season, you know, how you know, Alltech and Adrian were beat up a little bit by the Zaya and Rakan combos.
And, and that is kind of telling because one of the things I was really wondering about was would Alltech and Adrian have been practicing Xyrocon? Would they have been confident enough to try to bring that out themselves because they have been getting beaten up by it and have not really shown that they're willing to play it very often. But a couple quick AD carry bans already shows to me that they very heavily want to limit the bottom lane pool. And, and that kind of speaks to trying to mitigate the strength of TL here. Meanwhile, on the other side, I don't think there are any surprises here either. Team Liquid throwing yeah. some bans at Hooney. So both teams agree with the well-defined strengths of their opponents and trying to attack them in in the pick and ban phase. More twist at the end with Morgana, the final ban in this phase for Echo Fox. Kind of a nod to Ole's proficiency on the champion. And last ban for Liquid with five seconds to go. Kind of considering all their options, maybe another top ban. It is Janna though, so against Adrian. Yeah, very interesting. The Morgana has been paired up pretty heavily uh, recently with Caitlyn. People are really liking that as a combo. So you kind of figure, all right, uh, Doublelift has been playing a lot of Jin lately. Take that off the table. You ban away Zaya, that's essentially removing Zyra Khan. And I think they were hoping to then weaken the Caitlyn pick by taking away its kind of strong partner. And I actually really like the instant reaction from Team Liquid. Very quick lock-ins here. As soon as the oh Olaf is shown by Echo Fox, which is a champion who can take over the jungle early. You know, you associate that with Dardock and his playstyle. They're just going right through all these bands, actually. Yeah, th this is like a speed run of the draft here. <laughs> this, this is just to me tells both teams have got it totally prepared. And let's go through because Echo Fox, no surprise here, right? Dardock, early aggressive jungler. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that can be punished by Trundle, trying to soften him up, kill him when he's running into the team fights. Also, people have been taking Cassiopeia. She can burn him down as he's running in uh, and keep a little bit of distance there. Then the Caitlyn for double F pushing down those turrets. Have to really remember that there's actually the possibility of some flex here mm -hmm. uh, for TL because while we have been seeing a lot of Trundle jungle lately, we have seen you know Trundle top. We have actually seen Cassiopeia top uh, recently coming out in, in the LCK as well. So, you know, Potential to be both of these flex picked around. Definitely expecting it to be a, a Poe Belcher mid pick against the Rise, and definitely expecting it to be a, a jungle pick against the Olaf here. Uh, but there always is that option to move things around. We slowed things down just a touch. Two support bans by Fox, Thresh, and Tom Kench. Meeting with two marksman bans by Liquid in Ash and Ezreal. So clearly the first, you know, six bans and six picks were already kind of aligned by these teams, but. Now that things are kind of more adapting to these picks and kind of building these comps out, definitely teams slowing down a little bit more. I mean, definitely a tremendous amount of bot lane focus here as well. Eight total bans aimed at the bottom lane when you add them up from both sides. Yep. So uh, really heavy Wow. Oh. And there's Alistar, but there's Callista. And we were talking about this. Echovox looked great with Callista, but Callista got gutted. Definitely, definitely a lot of AD carries were very outspoken about the nerfs to Callista. Uh, so we're going to have to see how he works around uh, the new build. But also, Ole on Alistar, this throws back to last year when he was an MVP candidate, you know, roaming around, creating a lot of plays for the team. And, you know, double if is on Caitlyn, can be very safe there. So it, it may be a return of Team Liquid having the Smithy plus Ole synergy in action. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. When I did see that the Scion get, get locked in here for Huni Top, I, I wouldn't have actually been surprised to see Impact then take the Trundle. Mm -hmm. uh, they are electing to leave that in the jungle, though, and, and put Shen up there. Uh, so definitely a lot of pretty powerful engage, especially the Shen comboed up with the Alistar. You know, gives you a way in there and uh, some pretty powerful team fighting. Yeah, also some fallback patterns here uh, for Team Liquid are available later on into the game. Uh, they do have some protection, a lot of protection, actually, for both Cassiopeia and Caitlyn which are going to scale very well. Uh, this kind of goes into the same themes here for the teams. Echo Fox look like they want to push the tempo. They have Callista for still good objective control around Dragon. You know, if you do gank bottom with this Olaf and, you know, Echo Fox actually decide to play around bottom uh, for a bit of a change, then they could Dragon stack and try and snowball. And I do think that the call out of, of playing around bottom as Echo Fox is a good one because when I look at this draft, you know, picking Scion blind as, as your top laner does not feel like you are trying to dominate the game through top. Yes, Huni could still get advantages, but this feels much more like something that can TP bot or ultimate bot and look to really affect that. And especially with all the bands they're throwing, the Callista pick, they want to try to snowball this bottom lane. And, you know, if someone's to do it, you know, Huni could try and keep this Shen down, keep Impact from using the Stand United to the bottom side. Definitely going to have to take a look here because this is going to be an exciting series. Certainly is. It's interesting as well. I mean, Impact is so well versed in these matchups. So a lot of different questions. But Echo Fox, 
I would say clearly hiding something with their practice. Kalistra is a champion that I did not expect to see in the playoffs. And Altec's like, I'm good at this champion. We were winning on it. I think I can play it still. It is kind of scary, though, if you get in an isolated 2v2 against Double Lift on his Kaylin. The Kaylin is going to have a significant range advantage in that lane. And I do think that is why Echo Fox needs to be affecting this with their jungler, with their mid laner roaming down, their top laner TPing down. And that's what makes me think they have to play around bot. All right, that champion select got us riled up with the very quick lock-ins from both teams. But let's slow it down a little bit. We did get a little listen in. Well, going into this match, Dardock feels like it's his job to make sure the new banner doesn't just fall into Team Liquid's lap. In general, it just feels great to be in playoffs in general, just because I wasn't even a part of playoffs the last two, uh, two splits I was playing in, so just being in even quarterfinals would feel great to me. Just to have the opportunity to play in postseason is always really cool. And But in general, I think we've already solidified that there'll be like a, a new champion. But if it just goes to like, you know, the old guard team, Team Liquid, it's not as cool, you know? It'd be way cooler if Echo Fox 100 Thieves or CG won. So for that to happen, we, we have to win. Wow, how does Darduck stay so calm while invading and <laughs> grabbing first blood for them? He was so cool and collected. Well, I mean, if the game plan is Snowball Bot, how about a level one first blood on the Callista? Could not have gone better for them. And they get Olay's Flash, making it even more repeatable. Plus, they're looking to kind of pressure Smithy a little bit here in the jungle. So Echo Fox already off to a fantastic start. That was a multi-prong invade there by Fox, but very late. Find a kill, and Olay goes down level one. No flash, just a hex flash ready to go. Adrian did use both his summoners to get that happening, but you'll certainly take it as they're off to the races there in bot side. However, we are going to just watch this one again. And this is the danger of playing against that Olaf at level one. If you get tagged by an axe, he can run you down. Yep, so good at the invades. Ole uh, does get off his knockup, but not going to be enough there. Adrian flashed for that to be able to get the stun. And, and the mistake there to me from Ole is not actually flashing the Braum Q. Once you are hit by that, they can flash to follow for that passive stun. And if you don't flash the initial Q, it's a little bit too late. And, and that's a first blood, so a costly little error there from him. And you can see the Caitlyn that really just loves to be pushing most of the time is currently zoned off after that early aggression. Gold hasn't been spent yet by Altac, important to note, but he'll spend that when he goes back and have a very good leg up early in this matchup as Phoenix laying into Poe Belter early on. Yeah, some good damage there from Phoenix, but it's a lot of uh, mana spent there from Phoenix, so you know it's, it's hard to kind of continue that pressure, and, and Poe Belter will be able to heal back. Meanwhile, top side, going oh, for a gank. Can't. Yeah, Tom by Impact's not a good miss, but Huni might still be in some trouble. It's Smithy going to try and chase him down with a Tromp. Huni with the flash, he flashes over the pillar, but that might be the mistake. Flash followed from Impact, oh, and oh, Huni oh. still alive. No, Impact, he gets the final say. So Team Liquid do not ignore top lane. Smithy's going to go up there and grab a kill for himself. Huni still farming after he's dead. And such a good pillar there by Smithy actually pushing Huni away from the wall so he could not flash over that big wall there. So forcing him to kind of have that just flash in a line, which allows them to chase him down. It's just a strong gank. And Huni with the instant TP back, clearly not happy about that situation. And as much as we were memeing a little bit, you know, if there is a Trundle here on the map, a Shen Trundle can absolutely destroy a tank in the top lane. Usually like, oh yeah, Scion, he's super tanky and he just pushes so effortlessly that it doesn't, you know, it's not a good place to spend a lot of resources, but if you can use the Trundle ultimate, shred him down, Shen also has pass-through damage there. Uh, they can actually continue to focus Huni and try and keep him down. You definitely can, and, and even post-6, one of the best ways for Sion to get kind of in and out of these fights is his ultimate. Uh, the Trundle pillar can block that off pretty easily. It actually causes you to crash into there, so uh, it is a pretty powerful pick here for Smithy if he can get going. Uh, even having multiple good oh, oh. targets is going to be nice. The crowd is unhappy with Phoenix' lack of CS there. A couple <laughs> of missed hits, starting with the cannon. Yeah, trying to freeze the wave and deny some, but finally forced to push it, and Poberto will collect that under his turret. So good start there for Smithy in the jungle. Data kind of just farming through. So action has calmed down just a touch. So it looks like some early items have been bought. Altec spent that gold on his vamp scepter. Tier on the other side for Phoenix, who swapped the TP to get it done as Dardoch is back in the mix. I would like to see Dardoch get down to bottom lane now, though, as Adrian's getting his summoners back with the summoner spellbook. That's a shorter cooldown. Olay is still going to be flashless. So you'll have an Ignite Flash Braum against a No Flash Alistar pre-level 6. And I think that is pretty gankable. And they're trying to zone out the Team Liquid duo on bottom side. Caitlyn's actually kind of difficult to 
uh, keep away from the CS and zone out, but uh, keeping it fairly even there. Smithy again with another visit towards the top side, uh, but Huni playing it in the middle. Yeah, and if you don't know where Dardock is, that can be somewhat risky because, well, they may be able to chase him down if Dardock shows up. That certainly has the potential to get turned around. And he has been able to pick up the Predator boots, so Dardock very well could go for an offensive play here. Has his flash available. A lot of mobility uh, ready to go on Olaf, even without the ultimate. Very fearsome early on. I do really like how Impact is playing this lane, though, now that they have gotten this kill on Huni. You try to slow it down, you try to keep it over by your turret and, and force Huni to play with respect to your jungler. But Dardok is up here. He has not been... Oh, he is actually spotted now on the ward, and, and Smithy is in the area. So if they try to go for any potential dive, Smithy could be here to turn it around. Yeah, Red Smite Trundle, not too bad, but Dardok, I think, going to play it a little more patiently. Over the wall by X Smithy, going back to his crud camp, and it looks like things will dissipate there in the top lane. Yeah, a lot of defensive vision here set up, so Jungler's going to have a hard time making offensive plays. As you can see down the map, pretty much defensive control wards uh, for both sides and a little bit of river control for Echo Fox, but that's really the only difference. Yeah, and definitely some, some nice little subtle moves up on the top side, though. Like, I like how Impact is holding the wave, trying to force Huni into an awkward spot, and then Darda coming up even just to protect Huni while he shoves in the wave uh, does give him a, a lot more kind of safety there. And little things like that are very important, especially for top laners and that long lane that can be very vulnerable to repeat jungle ganks as we kind of uh, alluded to earlier. We have gotten to the point though where the level sixes come in for both these guys. We just saw Huni using his ultimate to get back to lane. Top lane express. Exactly, the top lane express, but Impact's express goes to the bottom lane. And the flash you mentioned for Olay is now up. And kind of the, the preface we had for the Team Liquid bottom lane could come true nowadays. Then Huni's only option would be to try and shove in the wave, but Impact could make a play elsewhere. Looks like Double Lift, though, is kind of through the rough part of the early level one. BF Sword already up. Altec still with some gold to spend. So Caitlyn doing just fine so far. CS has kept even there in the bot side. And this is something that we did see from Echo Fox uh, earlier in the season. Dardock's going for a play on the other side of the map where they're actually down globals. Oh, he's maybe trying to camp for the Cassiopeia, who's going to come over for the blue. They may look for Pope Elter, but, I mean, Dardock's not even level 6, so... Wait for Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix is here. Now they're going to spring the trap. The blast code already burned. They're going to oh, go into Pope Elter, but here comes Stand United. Realm Warp out for Phoenix, but it's su such a short one still. Was enough to get away. And this time, it's played very well by Echo Fox. They're able to get out the Stand United, the first one that has a long cooldown. And I actually think that Pope Elter could have chased, but Impact's ultimate was interrupted. And that's why they call off the chase, because despite the fact they had that shield, and nice taunt now under the turret. Yeah, Impact is a little low, though. Doesn't want to tango too much with Huni. We'll see if there's any more jungle pressure on the top side, because these guys are getting low. Yeah, Impact's going to have to go back to base. And they do get his Stand United out, but it does cost Dardock his flash. So overall, I'd still say it's a, a pretty positive play for TL. and. Uh, Smithy's coming up here to the top side to try to protect Impact and allow him to get a little bit more farm as his teleport will be up pretty soon. And that'll give him an opportunity to kind of go back to base without really missing out. So both jungles are doing a good job covering for these guys. Huni's early control ward does spot Smithy, but he will clear that out as Huni plays back. Dardock gonna spot Smithy again. Dueling level six junglers here. Oh, he could be caught out. Huni roaming down. He's gonna get the first slow. Look for the knockup. Doesn't quite grab a great pillar from Smithy to interrupt the channel, but Dardock still chasing. Ready with the Ragnarok. Impact has got no health. What can they do? Impact trying to defend. Great flash there to get them both out the safety of Huni. He wants blood. He's looking for it. Bumps them up. Air oh. there. Gets the kill. Oh, yeah. Going for Smithy. Gets them both. And Pope Elta trying to get a counter kill back in onto Dardock. He will be successful, but Huni gets away. Huni goes in and gets the Double their pickup for them. Dardock's axe over the wall actually secures the kill, but him not having the axe meant he couldn't throw it back at Poe Belter to slow him down. Did have cleanse anyways, and we have to bring up the fact that Poe Belter once again does make a big roam, even though this is an Echo Fox play, and, and two kills go over to them. For Team Liquid, Poe Belter does start to move early. Yeah, Poe Belter moving very, very early there, and. Impact has to go in to try to save Smithy. Smithy just kind of getting caught out because he didn't have the support of his top laner, who is very low HP. And then Hootie says, what's that about me being on a tank? I can get aggressive anyway. Yeah, he's able to get in there. And actually, Dardok was not uh, on the same page as far as continuing that chase into the enemy jungle. And had started to walk away, then gets caught on the backside because of Pobelter's roam. 
Regardless, though, a uh, little bit of extra minions there for Phoenix in the mid lane. And now he's got blue buff and a flash advantage over Fo Belter, so they could look to also target the Cassiopeia next. Yeah, definitely the case. And you can see Huni is going to be rushing towards a banner here, so going straight for that banner, looking to be able to pressure turrets, looking to be able to take advantage of the fact that Impact is shoved in, and here comes that potential gank on mid lane. Fo Belter again trying to weave around these skill shots. Darduk was ready for a gank, but nice little play from Fo Belter to get out from under it. Darduk had Predator. He did not use it, though, so they weren't looking... Uh, I guess, for a full commitment there. And since Poe Belter was so clearly hovering to the bottom side, they kind of surmised that there must be a Smithy hiding around here in the Fog of War somewhere. Well, it's correct also as Ix Smithy rooms back up. Now looking for his counter gank effectively here on mid lane. Phoenix with a flash, gonna maybe have to burn it. Again, Poe Belter chasing Phoenix, just hold, hold the summoners for bot lane. All in, Ole, he's gonna get stunned up, but he does pop Unbreakable Will. Looking for the travel, but Dardoch, he's down here as well. Ole still taking damage, tension added in from Shen. Ragnarok, dude, they're gonna try and rip the red. Ole somehow lives on a sliver of health, but Dardoch, he's All not gonna dead. get the kill. Altec still trying to dance around, but Xmithy could put an end to all of that. Adrian needs to get away, he gets smited up by Xmithy. He's gonna be left as a sacrificial lamb. Double it, looking to chase it down as Xmithy wants to try and grab the other kill. Double it finally gets it, but now oh. the dive coming in back. Looks for it, does get the kill into Jodic with the team that splash. And it's Smithy, the right one to tank it. It's not over. Poe Belter was walking down from mid lane. All right, Altec is going to leave because they have a missing mid laner there. But this should be first turret. Huni's trying to take down topside. Yeah, they kill it so fast, though. Trundle's so good at knocking down turrets with the attack speed buff from the W and Chomp working on those turrets. So they get the first turret. Huni just barely missing out there. And a nice roam from TL again. Action-packed early game. And Team Liquid just eke out a little bit. Huni here going to uh, answer the turrets, though, and they will end up above in gold. Yeah, so here it is one more time, the all-in. They go for double but nice flash at the start here from double to actually avoid the ultimate, uh, is able to get out. Otherwise, he probably would have been the one getting knocked down and not able to avoid the play. And if you looked at the minimap too, this play started out while Team Liquid was making a play in the mid lane, and Smithy roamed all the way from mid lane, now to arrive on the trundle after the first kill has been given over and Echo Fox were able to secure it. He cuts off Adrian, they secure him and kind of force him to go uh, turret uh, there and finish up the extra kill, but the dive is also finished off on the Dardoch. No ultimate necessary. Yeah, and well handled there by Smithy after the taunt was missed. Actually protects that. Another play. Clint oh. is good. Adrian sniped it with the Winter's Bite. Now it's Smithy getting it knocked up by the decimating smash. Dardoch claims it is right a replay and two more kills happen. Well, Analyst S was looking for some uh, very action-packed plays here, and this game is not disappointing. Ten kills already, almost 13 minutes into the game, and Echo Fox wants some objectives as well. Yeah, they're just going to make plays everywhere. Dardoch is moving around the map very, very well. Involved in all six kills. He has been the first of the play. And they have the banner completed for Huni. They're going to use this to knock down the turret. Yep, going to keep the pressure up here. This is the, the pace that you want to see in an Olaf game. But Team Liquid are staying competitive in the gold. With this last mid lane play, though, Echo Fox now opening up quite a lot of room to work with. If they topple this last outer turret and then take the Mountain Drake, that would be the beginning of that snowball we kind of talked about in Champ Select. And they're going to be able to. Plus, Alltech will get the solo gold like you hear. Uh, no, he's going to try to play it safe. Does want to back off. And may just try to save that for later. Doesn't have anyone around, so not willing to risk going down. But it's Teal that's going to make the move towards the dragon as the turret did fall. Yep, Teal reading the play here and just trying to get on top of the Mountain Drake first. They will be successful. Maybe a split map here as Fox look left and try and take down that Rift Herald. Still, we talked about how composed and cohesive Liquid have looked towards the end of their split and here in playoffs, but you can only thrive in the chaos for Solon in a team that was born in it. <laughs> well, they're still chaining objectives here. While Team Liquid makes the play on bottom side, then there's a lack of pressure for them on the top side. So Echo Fox tried to start up this Rift Herald, but they're answering here with the rotation. Yeah, they're moving around the map very, very well. And Echo Fox looks like they want to just commit to this Rift Herald, and TL is playing this pretty might slowly. Fight. It might just be going over. They don't have any Callista Spears in it, so... Oh, here we go! Yeah, but lay onto... Oh, Callista oh, caught! Could be a kill. The Rift Herald goes, but Callista's still going to get caught down. But we'll try to get the kill. Adrian, the next to fall. The duo lane dead on the Echo Fox side. Lack of organization here from Echo Fox as they're strung out through their own jungle. Ole on the Alistar goes immediately for the engage. And while Echo Fox pick up the Rift Herald, they do lose their bottom lane. Yeah, they are going to be able to defend the turret at least. And Hootie had shoved it in the top side, but 
uh, TL finding a couple of exposed members. And that is something you have to talk about because TL, while they looked really good in the quarterfinals, they did win 3-0. They were losing the early games. It was more the later stages where they took advantage. And here it is again, Echo Fox going for the rip, but Kalista gets caught out. Yeah, no hesitation there. Ole goes immediately in. They kill the Kalista while the objective is finished. And Echo Fox are completely split. So Team Liquid get to spearhead uh, right into the center of the team there. And if we look at the overall teams, uh, even though uh, Echo Fox do have their gold lead, it still feels a bit tenuous because of the lack of scaling on the Echo Fox side. Their champions are much more early game oriented, and Team Liquid uh, do definitely have some room here to try and grow in power. Yeah, I mean, not only just the AD carry, Kalista can really struggle to get involved as far as the shorter range compared to the Caitlyn, but as you get tankier on the Scion, the Trundle takes advantage of that and not only shreds you, but makes himself a super tank. We'll certainly see that things are progressing. Infinity Edge done for Double If Blade of the Ruin King was done for Altec in that last engagement, but he died, so it doesn't work out. doesn't end up mattering in a potential team fight. We talked about the banner already. Titanic up for the Shen as Impact looks to get things moving in the side lane. This is actually pretty funny considering the video we saw from uh, Inero at the beginning where he said Echo Fox planned on slowing down uh, their games in the mid-game. <laughs> Baited them. Especially with this comp, you do not want to slow down. So let's see if they can push the tempo, actually. Predator's ready for Dardock, but Team Liquid are in position. Dardock a little too far forward. Perhaps we're both going to chase him down. Phase Rush starting to proc, but looks like he's okay. Has Phoenix to run to. He's currently side landing in the top. One thing you always have to track, too, in this top lane matchup is the fact that despite... Huni is, is quite a bit ahead. Building the banner is much more about utility, is much more about helping the team, whereas Impact has gone for kind of the greedier 1v1 build with the Titanic. That's not only going to help them take that out, but fight's going to break out. Fight begins, Ole again starts it off. Kalista ult forced to be burnt to save Adrian. He's plucked to safety. Huni using that banner in the side lane right now to try and gain some pressure. Really where the, the true value of it is going to come, though, is the importance of the first Baron to this Echo Fox lineup, uh, and then trying to secure that objective with Callista Ren uh, and the early power of the Olaf. Right now, though, Huni is under attack. He's okay, though. It, it can get very difficult to utilize the, the banner, though, if you start losing the 1v1. And that's what I'm going to be interested to kind of track, as in fact has gone for a stronger kind of 1v1 style build. If he starts to catch up, if he starts to beat Huni in those side lanes, that can give TL a very easy avenue to slow down the game, to delay the game, and, and stop them from that snowball you were talking about, Kobe. Well, so far so good again for Fox. Just kind of utilizing the one through one It sees a lot in Rise comps, especially with the banner. And now the Rift Child channel mid. Fight him to exclude the interrupt him up. Again, Altec moves in there for the knock up there. It's Phoenix all trying to get the damage after the Realm of Pabeltano. In for a good flying angle. Everyone from Fox flashes out of the way. Stuns in the front. Adrian gets that. Hootie now fights and looking for the knock up. Finds two grabs. Double it. But Smithy also going to live in the front lines. And Smithy actually interrupted the Rift Herald summon. It looked like they're uh, the popping up. Yeah, popping up Dardock with that pillar. So the Rift Herald going to waste. They get nothing from it. That actually could be a very big stopper. Team Liquid are just playing to play defense right now. All right, we do have one minute and 40 seconds left until the Baron does arrive, though. And Echo Fox is going to try and secure a little bit more control around that area before it pops up. And that should be one of the big moments that will break this game wide open. It definitely will. And, and here's the play again. Dardock looking for that summon. Smithy Ooh. just straight up walks up and hits him with a pillar. And there goes that objective. And he's able to get out as well with the Stand United coming in. Uh, Pole Belt are looking for a bit of a flank. Yeah, looking like a porcupine there. He had a lot of spears <laughs> in him, but none of them were rendered out. So when Huni came in, they actually couldn't kill off Ix Smithy. Double Lift did heal him, and no kills went over to Echo Fox, despite Team Liquid kind of exposing themselves a little bit there and interrupting that objective. You mentioned the Baron, but Infernal Drake also up in 50 seconds. So another pretty important objective to fight for here in the mid game. You mentioned that in Chancellor, Kalista is very good in those sorts of situations. So Fox on somewhat of a timer here to kind of snowball the game, whether it's through fighting or objectives, and just kind of push it to a point where Liquid's strong late game just won't matter. Yeah, and, and Liquid, that, that was definitely their strength against C9, right? Controlling around the Baron, uh, utilizing teleports and map movement better than their opponents. And we'll see you know, if Echo Fox is able to better match them during this stage, because despite the fact they have Callista for securing objectives, Cassio can also burn down those objectives extremely fast. So if Echo Fox isn't in position, it could be a TL Baron. And speaking of a lot of that scaling, we're pretty much on the brink of it here for Team Liquid. Uh, Cassiopeia, two items completed. Uh, Double Lift starting to get the crit coming through. And they're the ones actually starting up this dragon. Here comes Echo Fox. Huni's on the bottom side and might 
and ult oh, up through the river. Look for the flank. This would be a big fight if Echo Fox could win it decisively. Looking to kind of move in there, but no one pulling the trigger on the ultis just yet. Banner Wave still pushing in the bot lane, though. So Fox do have pressure. Yeah, they have Waves pushing in the top, too. So TL is on a clock here. Waves are pushing in all three lanes. They're going to have to make the call to just back off this, which likely means it's an Echo Fox Dragon. Well, they're pulling them back down to the objective. Team Liquid kind of being forced here through the jungle. Don't want to walk through a choke point willy-nilly, though, as Fox, I think, just trying to faint for this Baron, but the speed run is there for TL. And again, the setup from Echo Fox. If you look at the minimap, both sideways, minions are pushing, trying to take down top and bottom, while Team Liquid are here. There, finally impact. Stand United's available. He goes to answer the bottom side, and here goes the Dragon. Really easy to force an error in this case, but instead, maybe the fight will be forced instead. Dragon goes over, Fox will get it, but the fight will break out all late. Into the back line as Impact taunts his way in. Phoenix trying to find a way in on the left side, but can't quite do it yet. Dada getting low, but the front line is looking a little die for a late. He lives again, somehow through a red, and everyone's just trying to get out. Karal back into the Phoenix. Smithy takes down Adrian. Another falls as double it slays Dada. They could go to the Baron now. That's Jungler down, Smite available for Smithy, and they have Pobelter here with full mana. This is huge. The teleport for impact. He could even get there to tank. And it looks like they are roaming straight up to the Baron pit. TP in though from Hooney aggressively getting back to the lane. The carries in one tank are gonna have to try and hold this. Impact goes back, they wanna get it. Yeah, I mean Echo Fox doesn't feel like they can just give this up, I don't think, but I don't know if they can hold on and get this. Ole is set up for a flank if anyone goes too far forward. Phoenix painting with the realm wall, but no one joins oh, in. The Baron's turn. still low. They might have got a little speck of vision, but it's not gonna matter. Baron goes over to TL, they get it, now they pull up, looking for the fight. Altec disintegrates to the team liquid damage, and now it's just turn heal and run. Hooney trying to break away as Phoenix lobs a couple spells into the front side. TL, they will give it up now as Adrian maybe looks for a counter, but no, nothing is TL. Do leap back, try and prevent, but they got the Baron of Goddard, that's all that matters. This is all that Team Liquid needed. Now they have a very secure hold on this game. So much extra damage going to be coming from the backside. Now with three minutes to push on Baron 2, they can collect even more from these outer turrets that are still standing. Take another look at that dragon fight today. Watch Olay here actually zoning so much in the back line and even delaying his ultimate until a lot of spears were already stacked. He tanked up so much damage and still is able to get out because the Rend couldn't kill him through that ultimate. So fantastic play zoning there. And then they just corralled him in the pit and start picking up kills. Exactly. Again, another great late game objective trade. Not even late game. This is just... This is the late game for this game. Trading for Team Liquid. Then we have Ole making a good Fog of War play here. He, he knows that they have this Baron secured, so he just wants to get the extra kill afterwards. Gets into position to slam all tech here. They take out the Callista immediately, and Team Liquid have really secured their route through this late. Yeah, I mean, such good plays there from Ole back to back, not only surviving the first play, zoning out the strongest member of the opposing team, then finding a kill on him in the next fight. And Pobelter is just so strong now. And this is kind of what we saw from Team Liquid versus Cloud9, controlling some early game losses and not panicking. Oh, now, God. yeah, good fellow by Smith to start it off, does get the ulti out, but get it blocked, and that's not enough. Hooney gets a big slam, but he dies anyway as Double it collects yet another kill. Hooney, though, going to try and run out and zombie farm, slapping down away, but he's going to live. Team Liquid still on the offensive. And there go those outer turrets. Those things pretty much instantly evaporate with Team Liquid's Baron. Bunch more gold in their pockets now. Altec is trying to enter mid, but that's not gonna go nearly as fast as Team Liquid on top side. And Impact is back there. Stand United's almost up, so he can clear those waves. He can join up with the team, and they can look to continue to push up here and knock out all these outer turrets. The gold lead is exploding. Definitely true, and Team Liquid not stopping there. Now they are on the inhibitor turret. Altec is recalling. Without him, Echo Fox do not have the damage to really contest. Yeah, Impact again still shoving waves down mid with ult ready, so can join if needed. Instead, Team Liquid just collect a few more turrets and back off with a minute left still on Baron. That Baron equalized the gold, and those turrets have now put them ahead. And we can see the four-man squad from TL. They're going to go back to base. They can shove up mid while Impact pushes out the bottom lane, still able to join with the Sand United. And they can look to collect one or even both, perhaps, of these reigning outers. And this game is kind of why everyone is talking about how the meta really suits Team Liquid. They get the tank v tank matchup with Impact and Hunia up on top side, and then they're able to just play the scaling defense in the early game, stalling out Echo Fox's plays, now securing such a, a big swing here. We even have a Zeke's Convergence 
built up here on the jungler for uh, some extra damage from Double Lift, who now has three items ready to roll on Caitlyn. The crits will be firing, and he has even the longer range from Rapid Fire Cannon. And I mean, he's been picking up so much gold. Altec was first to one item. He had Blade of the Rune King when Double Lift's on pieces. Now Double Lift is a full item ahead of Altec, and that shows you how much gold he's picked up between these team fights and the turrets and the Baron, and he's just massively far ahead. Yeah, so maybe further on in the series, next game, we'll get another look at uh, what Echo Fox were talking about in the video, where they said maybe we'll slow it down in the mid game, because this one is kind of a you know, swing at the regular season, sim similar strategy, trying to push it very early here. Uh, but they talked about it. If you pick Olaf, you better win early. Hootie now. Trapped again by a Pillar X Mithy, just kind of ripping him to shreds solo. It doesn't even need double lift. He's in the back, ready to go. Altec going kind to of threaten, but everyone's going to walk away. And Team Liquid up 4K as they look to knock down a few more turrets and extend that lead. And Huni is does survive, but he's fairly low, and a double lift has so much safety on this Caitlyn, especially with the rapid fire, to kind of get shots in on the turret. They have impact pushing up on the top lane, and that is a low inhibitor turret. So if he gets any alone time there, he may very well be able to just straight up knock this down. So this is going to expose their bottom tier too, and a TL is just moving around the map so incredibly well. It's about two seconds of alone time, but again, the pressure is still mounting. So Liquid playing it calm and collected as they completely split the map up against Echo Fox. This turret is forfeit for Echo Fox, but they might try and make a play. Not try to recommend it, but they defend for at least one wave. Yeah, Team Liquid have no reason to take any risks here. They have the range advantage. They have such a good front line for protecting these hyperscaling carries that they've got in Cassiopeia and Caitlyn. Now they can retreat over to the dragon. <laughs> Their blast cone coordination could use to work, though. Yep, squad room does not make it all over. Head down, the coach will be in the room. Infernal's up there. Fox want to fight. They know they're going to make a big play. They're going to start it off onto its Smithy. Chain CC down after the exhaust. Should be enough. And here's this Phoenix grabs it. Now Hootie riding it on the express with Pomelta and Double. Dishing out the damage all late. Tanking everything he can. Hooney getting low. One more shot. Going to make it. He flushes and still dies as Dada. Also low on the offensive. It's a round here. Double it. Gets himself a triple kill. Yeah, they're just going to push straight down mid lane. It looks like they want to try to catch up to the Phoenix here and see if they can knock him down they too. Oh, oh, gonna chase oh. Realm Warp, going to get shot. He needs a few more. The Mana Shield is enough off the Seraphs. Phoenix somehow escapes double his quadra. All right, there's an Infernal on the board as well as two exposed towers for Team Liquid to clean up after their victory. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to just go for the, the mid lane tier two, the bot lane tier two, and then retreat back to this Dragon. Double is heading that way now. Uh, TL just getting more and more gold in the bag here. And that is now six kills on the deathless double lift once again. Will he die in playoffs? Will be the uh, <laughs> the next question that we New have to start thinking. Under. Yeah, let's get going. New over at under. one. Well, Drake goes down. Infernal plus a mount now as TL go up two Drakes to one as we'll watch the last engagement. I mean, Fox, I think, did the right thing. Yeah, they, they engage here onto Smithy. You know, they are pretty separated. You can see the Stand United came through on double lift, you know, expecting them to focus that game. Yeah, so they tried to get Altec's, uh, you know, ultimate there uh, of Adrian on to double lift, but Smithy steps up, true frontliner. He takes the hit for his AD carry, <laughs> sacrifices his Remember life. Remember me. Yeah, <laughs> and even with impact going, all right, uh, I'm still going to ult double lift here. Uh, they do sacrifice their frontliner, but in the end, it is for the greater victory. Baron is going to be uh, back on the, on the table here pretty soon. Both teams are going to have to try to set up around this because Echo Fox, you have to feel like if they give up one more Baron, that is going to be the game. Well, you can see Impact, no ult for 60 seconds, but does have his TP as Fox. Kind of know again what's up. Going to try and force another fight onto Liquid. That pillar was sick! Black Smithy! Yeah, that's uh, that's rough. That's that's <laughs> the Trundle matchup, man. It's so hard as Olaf or Scion this late in the game to really have much effectiveness against this Trundle who can pillar you out, yeah. who's going to ultimate and steal your stats. And they're going to go straight to the Baron because TL is feeling strong enough that they can start this and then turn to fight. And Echo Fox has to answer the bot lane. Impact pressure has been immaculate so far in this mid game. As Team Liquid just waiting it out around the Baron, a huge trap line set up by TL as they camp out the Baron. There's a ward in the back though, might want to deal with that one. Instead, they start the Baron. All right, here we go. Echo Fox are collapsing. It's Teleport dead. comes in. It's a deep TP. They're going to try and make the hero hero play. Baron goes over to Poe Belt. The TL grab it, but the fight could be theirs. No, it's not. It Double it again. He's doing so much work, but they found Double it, maybe. They jump onto him. Now trying to get the red through, but Xmoothie shuts that down. Hooney can't make it into the back. 
TL play, everything <laughs> so well. Phoenix gonna get chased down by a top laner and a cow. Phoenix taunted, dead, absolutely nothing he can do. And Team Liquid collect the burn and four more kills. And now they're gonna march right down the mid lane here, looking to take the lead over Echo Fox in this semifinal. 8-0-6 on double if they just couldn't knock him Almost down. Almost nine there, and Impact <laughs> says, nope, take that one, thank you he very much. He deserves one for his work. Top laner should get something too. Well, it looks at like TL as a team will get a whole lot more out of this. Pobel 2 is even prepping top just in case they need it. Still pretty early on in this game as they take the mid inhib, but top is already low. They're gonna work on at least two inhibs from this play. Tower's gonna fall inhib now exposed. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, Pobelter, uh, how's it going up there with the minions? Yeah. We're, we're taking care of the inhibitor though, don't worry about it. <laughs> got the minions, got a couple inhibs. Everything looking so good for TL and it's really hard to think of a way that Echo Fox can come back in this without tremendous mistakes coming out of here. It's one of those, you know, situations where the strategy created a window for Echo Fox, and it was in the early game, and they were unable to get through the window. Now, they're trying to get through a brick wall here as they went for the Baron fight, and Altec gets chomped up. Nobody was able to finish off double lift. He actually kited it very well there, uh, especially at the end, and Pobelt are covering with the Miasma. Uh, just very well played by Team Liquid, even though they have this huge advantage and you expect them to win the fight after. Yeah, I mean, the tanks also did a fantastic job always switching to whoever was the biggest threat. When only Huni is there, they are on him. The second that Altec steps forward, everyone is on Altec. The second that Pobelter steps forward, you know, they're all swapping around and trying to protect him. And you can see Double Lift. He might have heard us on the over under. He is protecting his life. <laughs> a Guardian Angel finished, as I believe, yes, his final item. Paired with those boots, Woo! so he is insanely strong as yeah. TL look to siege the last inhib and take this game. I mean, Altec has, has a Doran shield and an empty slot. Compared to, uh, you know, a champion that scales better, is easier to teamfight on, is massively ahead as far as the gold goes. Uh, this one's all over but the crying. Well, the crying may just start here for Echo Fox. They're going to probably try one last engage. Turret's going to fall. And now they're going to go for it here again. Impact tying over the front. Dardock just dissolves. Nothing left for him to do. Pobelta on a rampage. Everyone's just going to go down. Pobelta is racking him up. Double is there to support. The talk goes down. The ace is complete. And Team Liquid will wipe the rift with Echo Fox's remains in this game one. Oh my goodness. Barroned up. All members alive. Clean ace. And some alone time with the Nexus. Well, it's now over. The crying probably started. But the first Nexus does go to Team Liquid. And what a game number one it was from them. Both teams trying to attack each other's strengths in picks and bans. So many bans levied at the bottom lane. Eight total bans, all five from Echo Fox thrown at double lift in OLA. And double lift goes 10, zero, and eight. As soon as that infernal dragon fight into the Baron uh, series of plays happened, I already started to think about, okay, what is Echo Fox gonna do to <laughs> adapt for the next game yeah. in this series. I think we're gonna see a much slower pick and ban in game number two. <laughs> well, we'll have to see to hear more about how Team Liquid took game one. Let's send it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very Ooh. much, Pastry Time. Team Liquid out hot here with the first win of the series, but we heard Azale saying it right there. He expects to see a slower pick ban in game number two because yeah. we had an exceptionally fast one uh, considering just, you know, the average uh, champ select time. Yeah, four minutes and 30 seconds to go through that draft phase. And for some context, we average around seven minutes. And Anero has been someone who's been a fast drafter all year long. Right. Uh, Team Liquid as well just felt really good about their picks with the way that draft fell out. And just how that draft actually happened was very interesting too. There were a lot of weird picks going on that I actually like some of what these teams did. Right. Uh, so as you see there, a lot of AD carry bans focused on double it. That feels a little useless if you're not going to first pick the Caitlyn for all tech because then yeah. Double Lift still gets one of the best champions on the patch and then the Trundle was interesting. And what we were talking about as we were seeing this happening is if Echo Fox is going to give away that Caitlyn so obviously, I just said, well, they're probably just going to pick Callista then. Right. Because even though that it's been nerfed substantially, this is how they were winning and maybe they've just gone back to that so they can get some early lane pressure. And that ended up being what they were doing, uh, but the Trundle ended up having such huge outputs in the game. Exactly. The first Trundle in NA, we've seen it in Korea and Europe. Up to success here, piloting or piloted rather by Xmithy. And it's extra effective against Echo Fox because 
Tr uh, Trundle has been the pick for Huni to counterpick tanks with while still being able to provide team fight yeah. pressure. Uh, and the fact that they get that away from him while securing a good matchup into Olaf and uh, eventually, as you saw later, a good matchup into Scion, uh, all things considered, oh, yeah. walking the alt. So a lot of interesting things in this draft. Well, at the end of the day, the win conditions that you guys had laid out for these teams did revolve around the top lane to some degree, right? It was attention towards Huni for one team and ignoring Huni for the other. But let's talk about how that manifested within this game, especially considering the picks as we see them laid out here. Yeah, with the Scion, Huni was trying to shove an impact Shen a lot. Uh, I think it was in Echo Fox's best interest to play around that and give him as big an advantage as possible. And Team Liquid did actually kind of go against Mark's win condition at the start. Oh, yeah, and so the first gank, I mean, this is just a nice gank on a push-up opponent. That's fine. The second, uh, then you saw another attempt that I like a lot where they're not actually uh, forcing this 2v2. They are ignoring Huni as much as possible. You still have to respect him and respect the dive. So Smithy's hovering, ready to blast going over to protect him. Then I did not like this one. So uh, a little bit before this, Impact was almost dead. He was underneath his turret. He had like 20 seconds left on TP. Smithy goes up there, provides enough pressure to clear a pink ward, and that's all he needed to do. But then he continued to push, looked to invade. That gets caught out and countered and ends up a two for one for Huni and Dardox. So even though Pull Belter does get a cleanup kill, he is now out of mid lane. He's going right. to lose a thing in the uh, his winning wave at his turret. And that was a situation where if they just focused on relieving pressure rather than fighting, they could have backed off of that side and focused more on their bot lane. A small misplay by Smith. He gives an advantage over to Echo Fox. Mm -hmm. We saw, though, throughout the early game, lots of kills falling through. Around 14 minutes, we had about yeah. 12 kills in the game. So very bloody in general. But ultimately, it was Team Liquid's play within the team fighting phase mm -hmm. that kind of pulled them out of everything. Both teams wanted to force the issue, and Echo Fox had really good wave pressure the whole time, so the only way that Liquid could break that cycle was by forcing fights. And here, Echo Fox has all tech just flat out out of position. Yep. Echo Fox had the waves pushing. They can just play a back and forth disengaged game, and they weren't quite as decisive as they needed to be in getting the objectives, and that always left the door open for Team Liquid to get the team fights, and in the team fights, Doublelift and uh, Pole Belter were playing insanely. And the better team comp shows here. Doublelift and Phoenix both zoned each other away from the fight, but the Cassiopeia is going to way outperform the yeah. Callista that's not that far ahead. So they win that 4v4, they win the 1v1, and then they meet back up and take that fight. They grab their Baron off that, and you see they take the game off. So you can have the wave control as Echo Fox, but if you don't have, you know, kind of the execution on those uh, uh, those neutral objectives yeah. to take them when they're available to you, Team Liquid will find the fights they want. And as you mentioned, with the superior team fighting comp and some very talented players piloting their main DPS, they ultimately ran right through them. Exactly. And you have to wonder how they're going to bounce back here because Huni had better numbers in the early game in that game than he has had all year. Really. Right. He was up 35 CS. He would have taken first turret if Echo Fox didn't opt into a 3v3 in the bottom lane, which ended up giving first turret over to double lift. And that is a game that I think Echo Fox is going to feel like they should have won. Very much so. They got so. first blood on Ole, burned his flash when they have the Callista. We're not able to punish that 2v2. That lane split. They had the Scion up top lane, was smashing the Shen. They even had Phoenix's Rise roaming around and getting a lot of early pressure on Pobelt through Cassiopeia. But again, Team Liquid bent, didn't break, something they couldn't do in the regular season, something they did against Cloud9 last week, and their team fighting was immaculate. Now, what do we expect to see here in Game 2? Again, it was already mentioned we expect to see a slower champion select, but beyond the amount of time it takes for them yeah. to lock in their picks, where do you expect to see Echo Fox make some changes here to maybe get an upper hand comp-wise in Game 2? I would really like to see them instantly pivot to something a little bit more aggressive in the top lane. I think you need to put Huni on something that's more influential than the Scion. He did get uh, blocked a fair amount by the Trundle, but like, right. I don't trust Alltech and Adrian to win those lanes. There was a moment where Doublelift recalled for a BF sword. It went completely unpunished. He comes back to lane and now he's against a long, uh, a vamp scepter Callista and then they just lost the lane phase slowly after that point. Despite, like we said, getting first blood level one. Right. Team Liquid elected for blue side so Echo Fox will be red. Yeah, I expect the blue side picks uh, frequently. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to first rotation or either first pick or second or third pick a mid laner for Poe Belter just to give him a power pick. Okay. But more so uh, Doublelift hasn't died in playoffs yet. Nope. And they're going to beat Echo Fox if they play front to back. We saw in that game, there's a Trundle who could tread resistances. He brought Zeke's Convergence, Night Foul, threw it on a double lift, and double lift smashed everyone. Yeah. They have to threaten him somehow. They're not going to be able to do it in lane. So then it comes into finding ways to flank him with Huni, with Phoenix, with Dardoch, and 
beat him. Because if it's just going to be tanks versus damage, I think Echo Fox loses. Right, we just needed the Arden sensor to complete the the, the entire yeah. support build around Find double it. But yes, ultimately it is it's starting to look that way in the series. Where Echo Fox is going to have to find a way to dismantle that front to back team fighting. Huni seems like the logical answer. We'll see if they jump for that. We'll see if Echo Fox can bounce back in game two. Their semifinal versus Team Liquid continues after the break. Hooney, he wants blood, he's looking for it, pops him up, and oh, gets the kill, oh, he's not going for it, Smithy gets some board to Pobelsa, trying to get a counter kill back in off the Dota, he will be successful, but Hooney gets away. Kalisa, don't play. Kalisa, don't play. He dead, he dead. Run, 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 run. Hey, mid, 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 I'm going mid. Everyone's just trying to get out. Karal back into the Phoenix. Smithy takes down Adrian. Another falls as double and slays Dada. Baron goes over to Pope Belt. The TL grab it, but the fight could be theirs. No, it's not. Double it again is doing so much work, but it found double it, maybe. The jump onto him. Isaac's trying to get the red through, but it's Smithy shuts that down. Hooney can't make it into the back. TL play everything so well. Double instead of support, the talk goes down, the ace is complete, and Team Liquid will wipe the rift with Echo Fox's remains in this game one. Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. Since we know the importance of lending a hand, we want to highlight players and plays that help the team bring home the big W. If you have a favorite assist from this week that you want us to highlight, tweet the clip with the hashtag NALCS and the hashtag State Farm Assist, and we may feature it in a future episode. So get out there and bring some support.